Here is a Harley Benton DC 580 CH Vintage Series uh, guitar. Now, let me say for one thing, I am not, uh, not endorsed by any products on this channel. I am not um, endorsed by Harley Benton. The, this is a guitar that I bought. I want to do a continuation of a, a review I started, I think, a while back ago before I was rudely interrupted with, well, you know, life. <laughs> All right, so why do I have this background playing? I don't know. I really should probably take it off, right? This is a loop I created. Yeah, yeah, just, but I should have recorded the loop when I was creating it because, but um, silly me, I didn't, um, I didn't have it recorded. But now it's in there and I don't feel like uh, redoing it. It's not like I even have anything complicated, you know? <laughs> but yeah, I get kind of lazy that way. All right, so let me just shut that off. That's just kind of, is, don't you think it's annoying? Oh, it's not, well, it's kind of soothing. I thought it would be. All right, let me shut that off. Wait, oh shit, okay, that's not the way I do it. How do I do it? See, I'm kind of new to this looping thing. Oh, that's it, okay. Double tap, single tap, whole tap. I don't know, just tap. So a continuation of this beast. Um, okay, so we have the Harley Benton DC 580CH Vintage Series. Man, that's a whole lot of words to throw down your throat. All right, so um, I'm really liking it, and I don't think I have anything bad to say about it. In fact, I have a lot of good things to say about it. So before I get along with saying all the good things, let me just be a let me let me list the the ingredients to make this secret sauce that Harley Benton is giving us. So there we go. So what do we get here? We get a basswood body, a set in Canadian maple neck, contour C. What's the neck? The neck feels really nice. It's very comfortable and warms up really fast in the hand. And a rosaic, it's a thermally treated rosewood, I believe, right? Oh, maple, maple wood. So it's basically, I think it's, uh, yeah, heat treated, you know. Um, but Harley Benton... I don't care what people are saying. Whatever people want to say negative things about Harley Benton, I don't, uh, I don't see that.
Gibsons most of my life, um, and Fenders too, and Gills and Gretches and all the good stuff. And I like I like guitars, but you know I got this. I think I got this for like a hundred and eighteen dollars from Harley Benton. It was for a B stock too. I just thought it was gonna be a joke. I honestly thought it was going to be a joke, and um, it's not. It's not a joke. I don't think it's a joke at all. <clears throat> so it's our fretboard radius is 350 millimeters. We got crown inlays, 24 frets. That's a lot of neck space in there, so it's great. So it's a double action truss rod, two vintage style pickups, humbucker pickups. That's all that the Harley Benton says. Um, that's all we're getting. That's all the only information we're getting out of it. <laughs> I don't know if it's Alnico 5, Alnico 3s, if there's any Alnicos in there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't, wait, is, is it even wax, is it even wax potted? Hello? Oh, 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 oh. No, we're not, we're not going microphonic, so that's nice. Okay, so we got the standard two volume, two tone controls, three-way pickup selector. The hardware is chrome, tunematic bridge, you know, the closed die cast heads. And actually, um, they're really good. These are actually really good. For the money, there's no complaints. I have no complaints. I think anyone who has a complaint is some. Ah, so strings, the strings they supply you is, is uh, 10 to 46. Obviously, the color is cherry with a high gloss. Now, I have changed the strings to, uh, to a different set of 10s because uh, when they first came, the strings were old. Um, uh, I did give it an, uh, a cleaning up in terms of uh, I oiled, you know, I cleaned up the... The fretboard, uh, I oiled it up. It, it, need, it looked to me like it needed a little oil. Um, I haven't done anything to the nut. No alterations to the nut. Um, the plastic is still here. I just took the plastic off the pickguard. Um, but I've been playing this now for a little bit. Uh, to me, it's still like brand new. And it feels just amazing. I just, I'm, I'm very impressed. Now, when I first got this guitar... Um, the setup was relatively close to being just too good to be true. Um, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Now, when I first picked it up, it just felt so light. It felt like a joke. It literally, it felt like a toy. I just like, no, I just can't even, you know, I remember taking it out of the plastic bag and just thinking, this has got to be a joke. This is a joke guitar, right? You know, but, um... This is not a joke guitar. So, to me, I actually like the pickups. Now, I'm a PAF guy. Now, back in the day, even in the 80s, I, I would, I, I would uh, take low-end low guitars that, like, well, I, would, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't consider them low-end, but, like, Arias and um, 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 Hondo, Hondo twos and Electras. And I would put uh, Gibson 57 Classic pickups in them in, at the, on the bridges. And uh, that would work great for me because you know, I get everything I need out of a 57. Um, I don't, I'm not a really high gainy person. I like, uh, I like a good clean, a clean tone. Um, in terms of what I like the best out of, for, uh, in terms of pickups for guitars are just your classic P90 soap bar pickups. To me, that's, I think, it, uh, everything else is, is just uh, an alternative to the best. <laughs> to, my, to my personal opinion, I'm a big P90 fan. But when it comes to humbuckers, I'm not really crazy about the super distortion and the high gain ones because it was never my intention to go for that. There was a time, though, uh, back in the, early 80, yeah, in the early 80s, that I did go for the high gainy stuff. Um, and I did have... Uh, a, uh, a very high-end strat type, you know, and I put tons of money into it just it had everything, had the works. Um, but long story short, I don't have that anymore. I traded it down for a couple of things, you know, um, just to get away from that. But um, move ahead a couple of decades, and now we're here. And now for just, a, you know, a little over 100 bucks, you get something 
that, you know, I thought it was like, it was going to, actually, I thought it was going to be on a level of like, say, Walmart or something, Kmart. It's like, this is like one of those first act guitars, you know, um, or, or the lowest line Epiphone lines, you know, they have for student guitars. And Harley Benton does make a student guitar double cutaway, which I think costs 80 bucks or something, but for like an extra 20, 30 bucks, why don't people get this thing? And that's not, and they have better versions of, you know, of double cutaway, SG type style guitars. Um, they have the uh, Harley Benton Goto series, which means the Goto hardware. Um, and I hear uh, just a lot of good positive reviews on that. I'm looking forward to actually trying that out in the, in the near future, as, as well as... Uh, um, uh, the the Harley Benton fusions. So if you're into following the sounds and uh, honest reviews of Harley Bentons, and l let's be honest, I am an enthusiast now because for the most part, I get an extreme value out of these instruments. Now, granted, I have I have my beloved Gibsons um, and my Guilds and stuff, and I. But I, I gravitate a lot of times towards lower, uh, more lower price, more affordable uh, ex exceptions to the rule, and uh, and I think Harley Benton is giving me this outlet to explore and not be a guitar snob, you know, because I I, <laughs> I like talking about guitars. Sure, I like talking about my my Gibsons and you know, and everything about it, and and Gibsons are great. <laughs> they are. They are. But that doesn't mean uh, there isn't room for other greatness to be around. And I'm not saying that Harley Benton is at any way <laughs> in competition with Gibson. It's, I don't think that's what they have in mind. And I mean, if they do, God bless them. But that's not what I think they're going for. They're going for the average folk the folk that maybe don't know yet if they want to pursue this road to the rest of your life, you know, chasing strings. Um, so, but what if you're, you know, you're a seasoned pro? What if you've, you know, you've, uh, you've been playing guitar your whole life? And what if, you know, you didn't have a few of the, some of the extra guitars that you've always seen on, on, um, on the guitar shops, but now you could pay a fraction of the cost. Cost Now, granted, they're not gonna have the brand name experience that you're kind of looking for, but they are gonna give you some other similarities, some other things that you might want to consider with whether or not you may or may not like the style. Because every guitar, this included, including, um, <laughs> uh, creates an, a link to every guitarist that holds the guitar, each guitar. Each guitar has a, a unique connection. It can make you sound good. It can make you sound great. It can make you sound lousy. It can make you play lousy. It can give you no inspiration. It can inspire you. It can hate your guts. It can make love to you. It, but... When you open up that case and before you put it in your hand, it's just a punch, bunch of woods, plastic parts, a magnet, and some steel. Other than that, what the hell is this? It's just a waste of money, right? Does it go on the wall? No. It's pretty. So if, you know... Uh, if you're not a guitar player, look at this. This is pretty. For hunt, like you know, for a little over than a hundred bucks. Even if this was hundred fifty bucks, this is great. Put this on the wall. Just look at it. It's just, it's just, it's just gorgeous. <laughs> anyway, so, all right. So, what am I getting? Uh, so you get your standard tunematic stuff that you're kind of familiar with if you're an LP player or a you know, Gibson player. Get your standard. Uh, tailpiece now on the level of a chroming level i like to measure from like one to ten meaning one is like paper thin uh, 
plating that looks like it's going to blow away. You know, the, uh, um, like very, very bad stuff. Um, or like heavy chroming, like um, Harley Davidson. It's like, it's like chrome on top of chrome. It's like 50 layers of microns of chrome, whatever you want to think of it. Just so much chrome. <clears throat> so if uh, the Harley Davidson chroming is like a 10, and then the real crappy chroming is at one. This would be just from my, what I'm seeing on my eye. I'd say this is about a five. That's really good. Over here on the on on here. About a four. The saddles. Not really a chroming, but there is a chroming on the uh, plating. I'm gonna give it a five <clears throat> on the on the pickup covers. It's a little dirty already. Let's see. Oh, okay. Now I give it a I give it a I give it a five. It's still good. Five is good, okay? Um anything above five, I should say. <laughs> okay, so um it comes to the the quality of the hard uh, the the knobs. I give it about a four, five, about five. That's good. We're not looking at, you know, I'm not saying twos and threes, you know. It comes to the, this, the pickup, pickup feel, it's a five. And the, the cover plate over here, it's about a five. A pick guard is about a five. So nothing is getting bad yet. There's no bad, bad points. In the back here, I see. Actually, a few chunks of wood, but no, like, real ugly knots or anything. It's all pretty. The joint looks great over here, well sanded and smooth. The neck, as I said before, feels so great. Uh, the tuning pegs. Hey, look at that. Got some little screws on the head. Oh, wow, you can tighten them up. Not bad, right? Okay, the nut. I haven't played with the nut, but as I, um, it seems fine. It's, I could probably be sanded a little rounded over here a little bit better. Um, though some of the, uh, some of the dots that are on the side, on the, on the binding, a little off centered, but Hey, you know what? This is not a big brand Gibson, is it? Or a big brand Fender, is it? No. This was made in China, right? Is it Indonesia? I think this is China. Um, um, I believe the pots are just your standard, you know, 250 size pots, the dime size pots. All right, so let's... Uh, Well, you know what? This is... I, I get a boner from this fucking... I mean, really? Now, I don't know. All right, let me let's continue with this because I don't, let's not be let's not be let's not let's not be foolish now. 
It's not a Gibson. It's a Harley Benton. And you know what? I'd show up on stage with this thing. I, I, I have nothing to hide. And no excuses that I would say this uh, denied me a, a, a performance level. No, your performance level should be perf provided before you even pick up the instrument. Just do your freaking best. All right? Now, this instrument, it would be passed up by just about every pro. They would have to first probably be persuaded by another musician to pick this up. Hey, you know, say, hey, pick this up, yo, just check, check, check. Otherwise, they wouldn't even look at this. I know. <laughs> These are not the type of guitars even musicians even want to be seen with. Or, I mean, like this level, this so called level that we're supposed to show up, you know at the rehearsal studio with or on stage with or be seen in a, in a, in with your peers with you know you're supposed to like you're supposed to show up with your Gibsons your Fenders your Paul Reed Smiths your Schecters your Charvels you know right okay i get it i get it uh i bought into it as well <laughs> And I was, uh, you know, I was happy with it. I was, uh, I, I was, you know, I got my Gibsons here, baby. And I love my Gibsons. But I have no reason to not give any love to this thing. The day honest truth is I would not sell this thing to anyone. And it's not because I feel bad about selling it. Because if anything, I'd give my guitars away. But um, no, this is a keeper because I like this guitar. This is fun. This is a fun guitar to play, and it makes me feel good. So, and that's what it all boils, boils down to, boys and girls. If this makes you feel good, then, then keep it. You know, if this style appeals to you, then get it. If you're worried about it neck diving on you, because it will. <laughs> But you want to experience it anyway? There it is. Go get it. If you wanted to know how it feels to have, you know, the guitar shifted in regards to your playing position, because an SG will do that, and that's the biggest complaint most people have about SGs. But you won't know that until you actually play one. And this isn't a, a real SG, is it now? It is. Well, it, is, it has that standard guitar look. And, it, you know, it, there, there's some obvious differences in the shape. You know, but it is giving me that SG feel, that, that um, the characteristic. And uh, anyway... That's my two cents about it. Hey, listen, if you're getting any thrills out of this channel, please be a sweetheart. <laughs> and if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button, notifications, like button, all that good stuff. And if you find me on Patreon and you, you know, you feel in a, in a donating spirit, <laughs> or you feel like you want to support me in my continuing endeavors to bring some truth, knowledge, and some old time rock and roll <laughs> when I get a chance to do that. And I will be doing that soon. But, but today, I really, I just wanted to touch base about this and um, my feelings ab about um, this Harley Benton DC 580 CH Vintage Series guitar. Seriously, does it have to be that long? <laughs>